province of Ifugao in the Philippines. Rice terraces 1,000 meters above sea level, a unique place that is today on the UNESCO list of World Heritage Sites. More than a thousand years ago, farmers built this with their bare hands and have maintained it ever since. People like the 75-year-old Mr. Maximo, he has worked here his whole life, but he is afraid that his generation might be the last. The terraces feed us for only six months. My wife and children do other jobs to have an income, he says. And here are the jobs in Banaua, the rural capital. The younger generation has moved here to make a living from tourism as well as or even instead of agriculture. Before, I only earned about 300 US dollars per year from farming. We can't live on this amount. When I drive for tourists, I can earn about 15 to 20 dollars per day, says Dennis, who moved here a year ago. The terraces have to be constantly maintained to prevent erosion. But this essential work isn't done regularly enough. More and more terraces are abandoned. In 1963, 34% of the land consisted of rice terraces and 2% was used for settlement. Whereas in 2010, only 21% remained as rice terraces while settlements grew to 10%. Will this land be another paradise lost? Unfortunately, oftentimes the people working in tourism are not necessarily the same working in agriculture. And one of the problems we face and the, the region is facing is to really have a better link between tourism and those who maintain the terraces, which are the reason for tourists to come to the area. Josef Settler leads an international team of land use and ecological engineering experts. They focus on irrigated rice cultures in Southeast Asia, a project called Legato. In our regions, which is a total of seven landscapes across Vietnam and the Philippines, we have, let's say, two major types of systems. One is the lowland, more intensive rice growing system, where we have problems like uh, for pest control, like pesticide application, but also productivity. And we have the other set of sites, which is more in the uplands, Vietnam and Philippines, which is very much about sustainability in the connection to tourism, for example. In Ifugao, a business-as-usual scenario might be disastrous. An indigenous rice-growing culture could simply vanish. The other scenario is kind of, let's say, ecologically oriented tourism, where you somehow also subsidize and support farming in the area because of the attractiveness of the area. There you also could think about uh, elements like selling local rice varieties, surely a kind of very interesting niche product, high quality local varieties, which are much more tasty than the lowland rices. A new generation of farmers who managed to combine and synchronize their half year in the fields with another six months in tourism. That could be a sustainable blueprint for this unique place on earth. <laughs>